Welcome to the 100 Club. We are on day five, I think, of the competition. Rich is at Lords and looking rather wet. We're going to have a quick chat about <laughs> what's going on. Okay, Rich. So we've just had the conclusion of London Spirit Oval Invincibles Women. What's going on? Yep. So it's pretty wet at the minute. It is bucketing down at Lords. Uh, it's not looking especially good, I think, for the men's game this afternoon. Um, you can see over my shoulder that there is a, a, you know, a hint that it's lightening up, but the uh, forecast isn't great, I'm afraid, for, uh, for the men's match this afternoon. OK, scheduled to start in about 10 minutes from you now. So uh, they've got at the best, I think. It looks like they're going to have a shortened version. Yeah, at, at the very best. I think the challenge is, I mean, right now it's really set in. We've had sort of drizzle all day, but the women's game had started, so it wasn't enough to force them off. I think if they can get a weather window where they can get started, they might be able to get some overs in or some balls in. But um, if it carries on like this, then, yeah, it could be very tricky. I don't know what the cutoff time is, but it's yeah. going to be uh, going to be a tough ask. We'll keep an eye on that. I mean, I was quite interested this morning in the drizzle. They, they seem quite determined to make the play happen regardless. Yeah, no, it was, it was good that they've got through at least one game today, given the uh, the forecast was so poor for the, for the whole day. So I, I think, um, and a very good crowd as well. I think it was like 13,000 in for the women's game this morning. Amazing. Um, so, and, and I think they were treated to, to, I wouldn't say a great game of cricket. It was a reasonable game of cricket. There were some good moments off it, some good individual contributions. I think a lot of people will be um, talking about the Alice Capsi innings. Um, incredibly impressive. You know, we know that you know only, only 16 years old, but also you know, dominating the bowling, getting a side off to a flyer, and ultimately probably the match-winning knock, yeah, eclipsing absolutely. even uh, England captain have a night. Yeah, who also looked in good form, but yeah, so the scores was 132 for seven off their hundred for the Oval Invincibles, uh, with London Spirit then only getting to 117 off their hundred in the chase. It really didn't get going that chase at all, though, did it? It didn't. I mean, there's a tiny Beaumont-sized hole in that yeah. London Spirit batting lineup, I mean, she'll be back for the next game. They really do miss her. Uh, Naomi Dittani played well in the first game, but really struggled here today to to kind of get 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 off off the, um, get them off to the flyer in the same way. I think. Uh, sorry, Karen, Tom. Well, no, I was going to say Deandra Dottin flattered at the very start. I think was maybe key to the innings, but just couldn't get it get it going, and then they kept losing wickets at regular intervals, didn't they? Yeah, it was a similar issue. I think. I mean, one thing we've noticed so far in, in the coverage of the 100, both on you know, TV and radio, etc., is has been very, very positive. And I think that's a deliberate um, um, strategy on behalf of, of, of the media companies. But I think we have to point out poor play when we see yeah. it. And I think London Spirit made a complete hash of that chase today. Um, you've got Danny Gibson has come in and smashed 30 off 13 balls, but she just hasn't come in early enough to make a difference. Yeah. So batters at the top of the order can't chew up deliveries and get behind the rate in the way that the Spirit did today. You know, you have to be more aggressive early on, even if you lose wickets early on. I mean, they were only a couple of wickets down after you know, 30, 40 balls, but just so far beyond the rate that, that they, they batted themselves out of the game. Having seen them fielded quite well. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, it was a gettable total today. I think we've seen, seen the same sort of thing, I think, in the Trent Rockets versus Southern Braves chase. That was the women's match as well. They only got to 110. And really didn't get going in that chase. So maybe there's some, I don't know, I don't want to call it naivety, but some uh, some tactical um, uh, readjustment to be had in how they're approaching these chases, perhaps particularly in the women's game. Yeah, I think so. I think there has to be, these are new squads. Players don't necessarily know each other. I think some of the senior players are maybe putting too much on their own shoulders. Mm. You have to trust your teammates. You have to trust that, if, if you get out early and your teammate comes in and has to do the job, that they're capable of doing it. Um, so this whole idea of putting the pressure on yourself, saying, well, I'm going to chew up 10, 20 balls, but then accelerate, that's fine if you get the job done. But if you get out, then you put even more pressure on those young players. I mean, the Trent Rockets yesterday had three players at the bottom end of the order who didn't bat or bowl. Yeah. So my question to, the, to Sally Ann Beans is like, well, what are they doing in the side? You know, we don't need specialist fielders at this level. Yeah. Um, and you're right. They had, um, I mean, there was a flurry of wickets at the end, but essentially they got to like 90-odd balls and they were four wickets down, way off the rate. Yeah. So they were not going they need to be more aggressive. 
yeah yeah i'd agree with that we have seen some good stuff over the last couple of days though um and i don't know how much you've caught you know we're just chatting uh i particularly enjoyed the supercharges welsh fire men's game and obviously i've got my welsh fire shirt on today i thought that was a cracker you know one of the highest scoring games we've seen so far over 330 runs i think in the day in the in this in the session uh and uh, some good performances there particularly enjoyed my johnny burstow moment <laughs> yeah no, I think that was the game of the tournament so far. Uh, obviously, the Welsh Fire putting on what, what 171, was it? And yeah. uh, the Superchargers 173. Nearly, 173, and the Superchargers nearly getting there with an amazing yeah. contribution from Harry Brook and Tom Cole and Cadmore. I mean, it was a good double header that one because the Welsh Fire women had, had done reasonably well as well and then just got completely blown out of the water by a sensational knock from Jemima Rodrigues. Jemmy uh, Rodrigues. Is, yeah, I think she's player of the week so far. Yeah, uh, I suppose we've had our first first round. Though. Everyone has played once. Now the Oval Invincibles are in their second games. London Spirit in their second games. So we can call it round one complete, I suppose, in that sense. Yeah, we can. We've had a look at everybody. We've got a sense of uh, kind of what works, what doesn't work. I mean, it was a very for all the talk of new formats. It was a very kind of regulation T Twenty game yesterday. The um, Trent Rockets uh, men against Southern Brave. You know, Southern yep. Brave just not not getting going with the bat, and then Trent Rockets. It, it was it was made for David Milan that that chase wasn't it you could <laughs> yeah. just see that he was going to be like 60 or 50 you've given out. me <laughs> the way I see it is like you can see him thinking I've you've given me the gift of time here <laughs> yeah I can have yeah. a look at this I don't need to chase immediately and then he just looked as classy as he can do yeah exactly I mean the surprising one there was that um you know Joe Root looked fantastic with the ball yeah. Um, he didn't get a bat in the end, but it's one of those questions, isn't it? Going into we, we keep talking about what this tournament tells us about the UAE later in the year, mm. and um, you know Joe Root was a bowling option for England. I mean, that looked as good as any spinner I've seen in the tournament so far. I would yeah. say one. What, I would say one nice moment I've had uh, wandering around the ground today. I had a look at a bit of the uh, London Spirit men's practice earlier. Yeah, and uh, Mason Crane was like turning them sideways. And, it was great to see. And Warren had positioned himself at Shane sort of Warren. umpires. Shane Warren had positioned himself at the umpire's position and was just sort of nodding with each delivery in yeah. kind of like a gentle approval. So obviously like uh, Shane Warren is Shane Warren is a uh, taking taking a delight in mentoring Mason Crane as a young leg spinner. Yeah. Can you just flip the camera? Let's have a look around. What have you got? Is, is there a, still a good number of people milling around waiting? Yeah, nobody's really gone home. So I'm stood here behind the uh, the Compton stand. A yep. sort of a pan round the nursery ground. People are milling around, having a drink, sort of sheltering from the rain a little bit. Like I said, the uh, the, the forecast is thundery showers, so like there is there's this hope. And, and as I, as I look to sort of my left, where I think the weather's coming from, it does look a little bit lighter. The question is, it, it just has to get to that point where we get enough of a window to get on. And I think if we yeah. do that, then we might get some overs in. Have they put all the covers on? I presume so. It's all uh, on. Get it all off. Uh, the, I, I haven't seen, but <laughs> given how hard it's raining, I would assume if they, if they have. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Okay, so Shane Warne won't be happy with that, but clearly there's another game going on this afternoon as well. We've got another double header just about to start, which is um, the. Excuse me, I'll just pull my fat figures up here. I'm losing track slightly. Manchester Originals, Birmingham Phoenix. Yeah, so but, people watching at home, they won't miss out. They could watch a bit of the Birmingham um, Phoenix Originals women's game that started yeah. at the same time. Intriguing one there. I mean, both those sides lost their opening games. Manchester probably played a little bit than, but better than Birmingham. But we'll see, uh, you know, not, not a chance to see Shafali Verma this time up against yeah. Ham pre core. Yeah. I and mean, you picked uh, this one for Shafali Verma to have a big day. Uh, let's yeah. see. Well, I think that, let's see that how the co coaches are learning and adapting because I think we've seen it a couple of times now that teams just haven't gone hard enough. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, you've got full batting lineups. You've got this sort of tactical quirk in the women's game that you only have four outside the circle rather than five in the men's. So the power play isn't quite so important. You can attack throughout the innings. A lot of people have been employing a tactic that's quite interesting of basically having five in the ring on the offside and four out on the leg side. So really okay. basically saying, you know, protecting the leg side and encouraging people to take offside. So it's been interesting to see who adapts going into the second game. Uh, I don't, it should be a good one today. I, I, uh, I, you know, watching the first Birmingham Phoenix women's game, she finally Verma was furious to get out <laughs> quite so early. So, you know, let's see if she comes out fighting today. Uh, I think the teams are in. Um, actually, no, I'm going to cancel that just in case I get that wrong. But the, uh, we, I, I don't expect major changes. There's been nothing there. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And that impressive um, uh, originals bowling lineup of Eccleston, Cross, Hartley, we'll see what they can do. 
I'll leave you to enjoy that one. I'll say just as, as a parting shot, um, mm -hmm. I've been coming to Lord, Lord's for uh, yeah, probably 30 years, and it's just a very different atmosphere today. Um, the crowd in, there's just like a lot of young, young kids, a lot of families. I mean, there's, I, like I said, I haven't seen a stripy blazer yet. Um, <laughs> it's, it's great to see a ground that basically a lot of people think of Lords and they think it's named after Lords as in the House of Lords or something. It's not. It's named after Thomas Lord. And he was a, a publican who knew how to put on an event. He knew how to, how to <laughs> yeah. entertain people. And he sold tickets for people to watch cricket. And 200 years later, that's what people are coming in. It's a new audience. So uh, very pleased to see that. Hopefully, I'm really hoping for both myself, also this big <laughs> crowd that we get to see some cricket this afternoon. But either way, I think, uh, no, it's been a, been a great start to the tournament looking forward to uh catching a bit of it later if uh e even if um i don't necessarily see any more here yeah well the sounds like the rain is falling less heavily on your hood at least if that's any indication <laughs> <laughs> less of an echo um i'm gonna go and watch the uh the birmingham phoenix game and i haven't actually looked at that weather forecast at the moment but let's see i hope they get some cricket somewhere there's plenty on offer <laughs> and we'll probably have a chat later rich uh where we'll let's have a look it. at round one as a whole uh maybe ollie will be around as well so we can have a look at the whole a whole set looking, of games, and we'll see what we're, what's coming up. Looking forward to it. Take care, Tom. Okay, thanks. Bye. And if you enjoyed that content, please do give us a comment, and that'd be much appreciated. We'll see you real soon on the Hundred Club. <laughs> thanks. Cheers, Rich.